I'm in Dallas for Verticon 2025, and over my shoulder, that's the most interesting news of the show, at least in my mind, that's the new Robinson R88. And yeah, I wore a suit to see it. Okay, what is an R88? So for Robinson, we work in, in twos, right? So our last product was the R66. They certified that about 15 years ago. So this is our new 10-seat uh, turbine-powered single-engine helicopter. It, it's intended for a lot of uses, but the main thing that we see is a need for multi-mission utility. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of folks who use it for things that are fun, like helicamping. It's like an awesome helicamping aircraft. Uh, but it will be used for firefighting, it'll be used for emergency medical services, uh, disaster relief. It's got all the hallmarks of a, a heavy lifter, an efficient lifter that can be field supported in remote locations. So, If you had to just say what category it falls into, because it's sort of an odd... Oh yes. Yeah, where, where does it land? It is the largest single that you're going to find in, in active production. Uh, and I, on top of that, it will be uh, probably the smallest twin minus one engine. So. We, that's what we look at it too, is that it will displace some twins out there that you really don't need the second engine for a lot of missions. And you know, there's a lot of good arguments to say that single engines are safer, they're more reliable. Um, in modern turbines, they, they don't fail when properly maintained. And so that's one of the reasons why we're really happy to have the Saffron engine on this. It's a, it's a phenomenal engine. In terms of features, there's a bunch of stuff that is not on my R44 that we're going to find right. on this R88. Right. Walk us through some sure. of the things that are real standouts for you. Yeah, so I think first thing, I'll open the door and show you some of the, in, the inner side of this. So on this side, we're on the left-hand side, and actually in a utility ship, a lot of times, particularly in these aircraft, you're gonna to wanna to operate cargo hooks and sort of long line activity where you're lifting uh, barrels or pumps and infrastructure, or you're doing uh, uh, Bambi buckets for firefighting from the left side. So it actually helps you when you're leaning out to more precisely manage the power through the collective that you see there. And so in that case, we also have replicated displays, so you really understand where you are versus the limits without having to go back and glance to the main instruments. So it's a really nice feature for utility lifting, and we've thought of that up front, so that it's gonna be an easy thing for customers to operate left seat, pilot in command, and do these utility missions as required. Now, you see in the cockpit is actually a highly configured version of the cockpit. Three displays, all Garmin G500H TXI displays, really, really high caliber, modern certified TSO'd avionics. In the center pedestal, you'll see both a standby instrument in the middle, gives you additional backup in the event you lose some of the other instruments. But on top of that, you'll see two independent navigators that run effectively giving you the capabilities to, to plan missions and have backups in the event that your primary navigator fails. We are gonna develop this aircraft as an IFR available option, and it'll look very similar to this. Uh, potentially one less display, but that's gonna depend on final cert. So, so a lot of work went into the cockpit design, and another big thing is the independent cyclics. I mean, we, that every, jumped out to me. Right. As a T-bar guy, I'm like, yeah. wait a second, what's going on here? Well, so a big part of that is to get a T-bar to fit in this setup, you needed a lot of geometry. It needed to be long, it was a wide cabin, so the T-bar would be huge. Yeah. So in this case, it was better from a physics perspective and better from a weight perspective to do it this way. As an engineering run company, we're not wedded to a particular design, even though people may think we are. This was the best solution for this aircraft. The aircraft features dual sliding doors for utility. So when you look at all the space in the cabin is available for you to use to load and unload the cockpit for, or the cabin for, for cargo and people, good for tourism, good for the opportunity to, 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 to change the orientation where these seats can face back and have club seating. Uh, that's a, a desirable thing in, in some of the high-end private charter. Uh, imagine your family, right? you have your family on two sets of rows and they're facing each other. So it's a heck of a ride for you know the long family trip out to a to a ranch or, uh, or, or similar, you know. During it, your presentation, sure. you were talking about some of the um, civilian assistance uh, for recent rescues, you absolutely. Know, all the flooding. Hurricane Helene, I yeah. participated in some of that stuff yeah. in California during yeah. some of the blizzard we had. Sure. And so um, I, I can imagine pulling those seats and having a ton That's of right. cargo space yes. for for moving supplies here That's and right. there. And you can see these these there's two two. Uh, Pit, put pit ends that hold them into the, the seat rails, and you basically pop them, and then you can tilt it out, and that gives you the ability to really easily pull them in and out of the aircraft. They're all they're pretty lightweight, easy to handle, so it's one of those things that you can do as a single pilot, deconfigure the aircraft, and then load up with you know relief efforts and, and, and gear for 
uh, whatever the mission requires, you know. Also, nerdy observation, but looking yeah. down here at the little you cargo like it, right? nook, you like it, it looks like what you'd find on Star Tours. Right. Like, it's cool, but like, like Brings just Brings back memories of Star Tours as a kid, right? 100%. Yeah. That, and also yep. stylistically, I feel like, I like my R44, but this is um, advancing the stylistic approach Absolutely. Uh, for Robinson in general. Does this give us a sense of maybe where the brand is going in general? Yeah, I think, I mean, we definitely took advantage of the fact that we live in a great automotive town in Torrance, and we have a lot of folks there that are creative, proven automo automotive style innovators. And so we really benefited from some great consultation and support. And now that's infused in how we design aircraft. So I think we'll have more exciting things to show in the, in the near term that will highlight additional automotive inspired technology forward uh, interiors and styling. So you'll definitely see that. So we got a really cool drink holder down right. here. Uh, tell us yeah, about exactly. this. Exactly. So in the firefighting industry, for some of the, watch your step behind you, but the contract side of the industry a lot of times requires the ability to store things like shovels, picks, chainsaws externally. And so this, this easy, is easy to open, simple, simple uh, process to unlatch and give you the ability to open up the um, storage. And you can see it's, oh, that's it's a, a pretty, simple, pretty simple way to run dirty things, chainsaws and mud, mud covered shovels, that kind of stuff, all within this basket. Um, and so the intent is for Robinson to design a certifiable version of this basket. This basket is close to what we'd certify, but actually I think it's a little heavy and a little bit complex in some areas. So we're gonna iterate on it. It's also a step, so you can actually go through the step. Oh, and also during the presentation, you yeah. mentioned um, that this is the high gear version. That's right. But That's a right. ton of clearance. It's on 37 inch skids right now. That's the high skid. The standard skid's 31 inches, so you gain effectively the six inch reduction in the, in the height. Intentionally, the 37 inch gives us the ability to put a standard industry leading aerial uh, firefighting tank, for, mm. which is critical for flying over cities. Uh, most places you do firefighting with either Bambi buckets or with tanks. Tanks or if you're gonna fly over, over people's houses and things like that. So we'll have that as a demonstration very soon because we've demonstrated it in, I think it'll, it'll be on the show floor maybe Wednesday, so you'll get to see that. Do you think we can make our way to the yes, rear? Because that. that is one yep. really interesting feature. Yeah, very unique feature. feature, right? Yeah, so what you have here is intended to be a, a, a simple way to load. And a lot of helicopters have a complex shape in this back, and so they end up with very complex moving parts for clamshell doors. We thought, first, this is actually a preferred aerodynamic shape for us. It actually improves the drag of the aircraft. But secondarily, in this, this configuration, it makes for a very simple um, tailgate-style door. So if you look at it, you know, you've got all this area to work with and you can load things in at a reasonable you kind of ergonomic height. Mm -hmm. uh, when the seats are out, you can go straight through and you can put a stretcher in, a long ladder, pallets of wood, a variety of equipment that you might need to move, you know, through the 350 plus nautical miles, you know. So it really is intended to be kind of a mixed utility entry point. And some folks may, may load stretchers, but helicopter emergency services, some folks prefer to go in through the side. So we'll give you both options with this. You know, and kind of flexibility. That's right. And the stuff that's not here, what do we know right now? Yeah, so we actually know the geometry and dimensions and all the shapes and all that stuff. So it's all known to us, but for practicality purposes, we didn't want to like take up the whole booth with this one helicopter. Yeah. And, and we showed in the rendering how the aircraft looks, the tail and the main. So folks generally can do that. In fact, in my previous life, I also know that the other OEMs, if they can see your rotor and see your tail, they can know everything they want to know. Yeah. So we're going to keep it a little bit tricky on them so they can't measure all the stuff. That, that is a convenient segue though. Let's talk about power plants. Sure. And uh, yeah. you know, what are some of the um, the performance targets? The aircraft itself has a 950 horsepower uh, Ariel 2W engine, which is the latest Ariel variant. And it's based on their two plus architecture that uses all the improvements they've learned over 66 million flight hours on that line of, of uh, Ariel products. First ran in the 70s. So it's a very, very mature engine but they're continuing to innovate and develop it. It features their newest FADEC variant as well. The, it's a brand new box with new, new uh, latest generation circuits and, and hardware. Um, so it gives a tremendous advantage for long-term performance in the fleet. Um, better for data collection, better for data offboarding, that kind of stuff. The product itself, you know, we're, we're intentionally giving folks a, a, a starting point for performance. We'll expect these things to get better over time. Uh, but 2,800 pounds of internal payload so that folks can fill the seats and fill the tank. And depending upon if you don't have, you know, big, super huge Americans, you can fill it all the way through, no problem. 
um, and fly fly the full legs, which is over 350 nautical miles. So uh, the standard feature set. There were right. a bunch of really cool standard yeah, features. Yeah, yeah, several big ones, but probably the ones I think are most important are an included four-axis autopilot. So that's a really great safety enhancement. When you look at accidents, the number one concern is flight into IMC. If you were unprepared, even for IFR pilots, if they set off as VFR and they get themselves an IMC, they're in trouble. So the intent is the 4X autopilot gives you push button from the cyclic, level the aircraft, gain your bearings, settle your, your, your inner ear and all that stuff and get back to a uh, stable outcome, right? Another one is bird strike windows. We innovated in our, our all of three of our product lines, the 22, 44, and 66, ultra lightweight, ultra low cost, bird strike windows that meet Part 29 safety standards. And so this, this aircraft will have that from the beginning. No one else in the class is anything close to that. And so when you consider those two safety features, you're gonna to continue to drive the industry forward in improving safety. Uh, it also features our in-house uh, cockpit camera that we developed as well. Mm. Uh, we don't highlight that because the standard feature has been that way for several years now for us. But it's another one where we're pushing the in industry forward and trying to get customers so that they know that we care a great deal about their safety and about the safety of the fleet. So uh, it certainly helps tell that message even more clearly, you know? We don't have it here, but um, in the video, it looks like there's a two-blade main rotor. It is, is that... two-bladed main rotor, that's right. Okay. It's actually our latest generation of the two-bladed main rotor. So we spent a lot of time learning all that can be known from the 22, 44, and 66. And this takes advantage of all those with the newest materials, the newest manufacturing methods. Uh, so we're really excited about it, and it will be a very big blade, but it will be an exciting step forward for us, both in sort of the manufacturing approach and the, the materials we use, yeah. And then you mentioned 22, 44, and 66. As a 44 owner, I'm curious, is there any 44 slash 66 in the 88, or oh, yeah. is this clean sheet? Yeah, it, so it's clean sheet, but when you look at the hub, for example, there's a lot of components that are very similar, just have scaled components and new material, that kind of thing. Uh, but in the core of the aircraft too, like landing gear, very similar to what we did in other landing gear in the past. Some really neat, the front, that front horn is very different. Um, hydroform part, different mm. than what we've done in the past, but gives that neat contour, that sleek design. Uh, but all the other components very similar, welded structure, welded tubes, machine parts, all things that we use today. So there's a lot of similar heritage, similar part types and materials. Uh, but you know, when you do a clean sheet design with a new engine, you, you always think and dream big, you know? I know you've got places to go, so I've got two last questions. One, you did mention uh, starting price. Yes. Uh, you want to share that? Sure, 3.3 million for the standard equipped configuration. And you know, one of the things that we're going to walk through with folks are the various options that you can expect at certification. Uh, that's going to be part of the, the education over the next several months and really the next year probably. People can consider that it, it competes extremely favorably versus the market leaders today in both the light single category and the light twin category. Cabin volume, performance, economics, uh, we know that this is going to make a change, a, sh a shift in the industry. So excited to get it out there and customers to, to see and touch it. So. Absolute last question. Yep. Uh, approximate timeline. Our goal is to get these darkening the skies starting <laughs> at the end of the decade. So that you know that's that's five short years away. And by that point in time, we'd expect to have certifications and production aircraft rolling off the line and going to our global customers. So uh, there's obviously a lot of steps to that, but the most important steps start tonight and had started months earlier when we met with regulators and with the steering committees to, to validate all the requirements. So um, a lot of the major building blocks are all in place. So now we just got to run and run fast. You have a lot of work ahead of you, but tonight was a really successful night by my eyes. Would yeah. you like a high five? Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Up top. Oh, there yeah, we go. Thank you. So the R88 is going to bring more capability, more seats, and still plenty of value to the Robinson brand. Uh, the big question is, what do you guys think? You like the R88? Tell us what you think in the comments section. I won't be buying one. My R44 serves me just fine, but well, I don't know. Maybe if the Brinks truck rolls up to the Museo house, yeah, maybe there's an R88 in my future.